Hey guys, this is Lotus Comic Express. We're here at Dallas, which is amazing in its own right. But what's even cooler are two different things. A, I've never done a twin interview, and B, I'm doing a twin interview with the Elevator Sisters at Evol. I, I hope I'm okay. So, just just saying, guys. So, so getting right down to it, you guys have been booked all weekend long. How's the convention been for you? Uh, it's it's amazing. I'm still surprised anybody is here to see us. I'm always surprised anyone shows up, and yes, I'm grateful. It's so sweet. Yes, it's but, just love. Well, I agree. I mean, we I, we all love what you do. I mean, anywhere from the graphic novel to the elevator. I mean, you guys are the elevator sisters. Come on now. That's the best job in the world. I can't believe they pay us to do that. I, right? And I now agree. We can't help it. Every time we go in an elevator, we're like going down. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a favorite moment out of the elevator, uh, the, the the elevator series itself, or? Uh, I have a favorite moment. Uh, season two, when the slacker is all horribly lost in the final round. Yeah. Oh, I was so happy because by the grace of God, they just somehow made it through everything. And uh, if you're watching, kids, you're not very smart. I think you'll grow into it, but you're not very clever. So I was really happy to see them lose. That is awesome. Man. Do you have a favorite moment yourself, ma'am? Yes, I like working with large tarantulas, and I got to work with a Sam and Goliath. Her name was Andre, and uh, her co-star was a different uh, Costa Rican tarantula called Megan, yeah. after the Key and Peele sketch, of course. And right? she was amazing. Like, that little tarantula, well, little, she was this big, but she was awesome. So, how did, how did you guys eventually get into acting and all that? I mean, originally. Oh. As far as like the original scheme of acting and all of that, how did you guys eventually, what was the first thing you guys initially, like, I'm going to do that, and th th this is what I decided to do? Wow, I think it was because of the Olsen twins, because we were a little really? around the same time, all and right. of course, Full House was like so popular, and we're like, I want to do that. And we ended up doing that, but it's not like, uh, girls don't often get encouraged to be the head of their own studio, run right. their own company, be writer, director, so we were like, oh, that must be the only option, being a little girl. And as we got older and angrier, I was like, you know what? I want to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself? Yeah, well, same, same as her, but it was a really zigzag kind of path to directing. Okay. We started with acting, and then as we got older, uh, female roles aren't the best as is, but roles for identical twins are really lacking. So we made Dead Hooker in a Trunk and realized, oh my god. I like filmmaking more than acting, because right. you control it. I'm a, I'm a controlling bitch, I guess. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> Not sure to respond to that, but, but. Why? Why? But, however, your graphic novel is amazing. Uh, That's initially the, how I became a fan. Was the, I can't believe it. And, like, the video production that you guys do, I mean, you guys have your own video production company. Then not, and then, on top of that, you guys caught, both of you guys got caught on fire on set. So, ah! I hear there's a whole story to that. Oh, ten years story in my... Ten years in the making. So, Dead Hooker in a Trunk, uh, one of our coordinators was Lauro Chartrand. And he was the person in the film school that actually inspired us to do Dead Hooker in a Trunk. His course was awesome. Everything else was shitty there. But he was all very like, go follow your dreams. <laughs> my dream was to be set on fire. Her dream, set on fire. Uh, Laura said no, obviously. Like, right. <laughs> and the years continued, and if you see interviews, Jen talks about this, I want to be set on fire, I want to be set on fire, I want to be set on fire. And so we get a message from Laura, and he's doing this cool movie called Crimson Creek Massacre, and he's like, hey girls, would you like to be in this movie? And also you get set on fire. And then I think we had to pause, so we didn't, ins like within a second, say yeah! Just so we looked cool, like we just sat there and be like, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, wait seven minutes, 17, it looks like you're busy and cool. Because <laughs> he told me part of the story offset, and I was like, all right, I gotta ask them. <laughs> <laughs> so that is awesome, that is amazingly cool. I mean, and then, do you have any other new reactions oh. to like being set on fire yourself? You have never met two people more enthusiastic about being on fire. So uh, I will say I didn't realize how cold it would be to be okay. set on fire. Because they put this protective frozen water-based gel all over you. And they soak you in it, which is awesome because it's so you don't burn and die. Right. So I will warn people who want to burn, it's cold, surprisingly. But being on fire, 
It's like being a phoenix. It felt awesome. <laughs> All I had to do was think, please don't laugh, please don't laugh, please don't laugh, and please don't let Lash know how excited you are to be on fire. Because, you know, most people don't want to set excited to be on fire people on fire. That's true. <laughs> that is true. No, with the new movie coming out, Crimson Creek, it was it... I mean, it's a little bit different than because it's kind of a western, yeah. which is kind of abnormal to see you in an elevator <laughs> and then Crimson Creek. It's very different. Do you have any favorite moments of Crimson Creek Massacre that um, you guys like to share and set? Well, it's different from being a director actor, okay. and an actor because when you're an actor, you're the talent, so you don't do anything and they dress you up and say how pretty you are. Right. My outfits on Crimson Creek are awesome. I mean, like, I must pull in good money in the bordello where I work with her as the Good Time Twins, because those outfits are off the hook. And by off the hook, I mean I'm stealing them after we're done, and they're going into my house. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine I would imagine so, and for a rightful reason. I saw the trailer, and your dresses are awesome. Oh, I love so it. So I could see why. <laughs> you know? That makes sense. Well, because you guys are into TV, and I, I know that you don't have a lot of time. You've been in, in the graphic novels. Obviously, Crimson Creek is a different genre all of itself. Do you have any advice to offer the new generation of film students or new generation of people that are just now getting out there and doing film, productions, indie films, or any of that? Yes, lots of advice. I would. The biggest piece of advice I'd give people right away is if there's something you like as much as filmmaking, please go do that instead. Go do it instead because it's a very, very hard job. And if you don't want it more than anything, the lows are really sucky. They suck. Like, read Rebel Without a Crew, when Robert doesn't have Christmas money for, and he spent his savings because he was going to be famous, and yet he wasn't in time. There's a lot of sucky parts in directing. But if you're listening to me being like, no, I'm one of those people that has to do it, then yeah, keep doing it. Be undeniable. And if you work hard and are always learning, you're going to make it. You always will. But brand yourself. That's good advice. Don't just be a dude. That makes sense. And what about yourself? You can fail doing something you hate, so you might as well flame out in something you love. Always follow your stupid fucking dreams. I would agree with you. <laughs> My whole business is designed around that. So, nice. absolutely <laughs> agree with you. Now, guys, now, one wrap-up question for you. Because you did the graphic novel, do you have a favorite superpower? Jesus powers. I want all the powers. Blessed be. <laughs> This is the best interview ever. Okay, and yourself? I'm the other end, pyrokinesis. So, so I guess I want Satan powers. Oh, that is awesome. Whoa! Yeah, I'm gonna. Ch <laughs> that is awesome. Mine was flood. Oh. I want to fly. Yeah, absolutely. But thank you guys so much for your time. You I know I know you didn't have a lot of it. Yeah, thank you very much. So much. Appreciate it. Come check out these ladies. They're absolutely phenomenal. And Elevator, Crimson Creek Massacre is their new movie. Come check that out. Go, go check out their production company, Twisted Sister Productions, right? Oh, Twisted Twins Productions. I always I got mixed wondering. up with D because we wear almost as much makeup. I was curious. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't sure if it's Twisted Twins or Twisted Sisters. Uh. But that is amazingly cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Come check out these ladies. We'll have some information down at our website. But come check us out at LotusComics.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.